Well, we're back working on the gardener mill. Mm. If, uh, to get everybody caught up, this is a, a urethane foam casting from the 1990s that was sold by Mountains in Minutes. And back then they offered several half inch scale structure models, including this cool mill. Well, that's neat. And I had it out in my backyard and it's, it was sat out in the weather for years and, and yet it looks pretty good. And this week, the plan is to motorize the mill wheel. Oh, fun. Because uh, if it's going to be inside here, I think it would just be so much funner if the mill wheel went around. Mm -hmm, and the webs were cleaned out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it still shows a little bit of wear and tear from being out in the yard. I suppose I should clean it. Either that or create a revolving door for spiders. <laughs> Well, one of the problems with motorizing it is uh, they drilled it off center. They did. And the other problem is I'm just not that keen on the mill wheel itself. It's kind of neat in its own way, but then as an indoor, more detailed model, I just don't quite think it's up to the task. No, I bet the spiders don't either. <laughs> And so just on a lark, I went to eBay to see if by some chance somebody sells a, a mill wheel. <laughs> and they do. Well, they have everything on eBay. <laughs> well, these are for, uh, these are replacement mill wheels for garden stuff, you know, a little garden mills. And this was the smallest size. And the largest size is like two feet. Oh, wow. But they're all the exact same wheel. One thing that I thought was mildly disappointing is the spacing is really peculiar here on the little uh, separations. But then I found you can just grab the two sides and twist and get whatever separation you want. Oh. So it's designed so that you can set the separation by just twisting it like that. Oh, neat. That's actually a pretty clever that's, idea. That's cool. So leaving eBay behind and heading on over to Amazon, I wanted to find an appropriate motor, and this guy jumped out at me. It's uh, 10 RPM. It's available in 10, 100, and 150 RPM, but it's a pretty decent looking little motor with a gearbox attached for a very reasonable price. And I thought, man, uh, the 10 RPM is just perfect. That should be exactly the speed I'm looking for. And then they also have a, a motor mount for it. Oh, cool. So I ordered one of these too, so it'll just easily mount. And then I ordered this uh, timing belt set. Again, very reasonable price. I've used these in the past and they're just wonderful. Well, who hasn't? I mean, back in the day when your motor would fall apart if one of those broke? Yeah, I think this is direct replacement for the, the Dodge uh, Slant 6. Oh, okay. I was just thinking of my little Plymouth Turismo that, you know, the valves would crash into the pistons and ruin the whole engine when that broke. Well, I actually went through a phase where I was building my own uh, motion picture audio recorders, and this is how I, I ran the whole system. Oh, neat. Was with these guys. So I figured this will be perfect for the mill. And then I also ordered a whole bunch of belts in different sizes so that no matter how I ended up mounting it, I would have the appropriate belt. And whatever doesn't get used here is going to get used on the turntable. Exactly. And the specifications here on the motor are that it has a six millimeter shaft on the motor, which is perfect for the, the sprocket set on the timing belt. Well, look at that. I think they're actually designed to work with each other. Yeah, I, it looks as though. Now, unfortunately, the uh, the shaft size for the mill wheel, the water wheel, is ever so slightly smaller. And so rather than drill that out, I decided I would just use KNS telescoping brass tubes and make a little adapter that adapts the smaller size for the wheel up to the larger size for the timing belt. Well, I find it interesting how the KNS brass seems to telescope neatly inside of each other. Yeah, it's a clever system. It is. Each one just fits neatly inside the other. And then I, I got the appropriate size all figured out and then just silver soldered the whole thing together. That's neat. At that point, it was just a matter of cutting down the length on this so that it would fit neatly inside the mill structure. 
and fish that through and through the wheel and uh, and there it is. Wow. And now the new version doesn't wobble. And I think it's a better looking wheel. Oh, I like the looks of it much better. And I like to use these little plastic connectors on all the structures so that I can remove them. But what I did here with the motor is I put this connector in backwards uh, relative to male and female so that I can easily tell the difference between the light circuit and the motor circuit without having to get down on my hands and knees and study it. Now, a quick coat of paint. This is just the base paint. This isn't the final color. But uh, I need to get a lighter color on there so I can start putting darker washes and then lighter dry brushing and so on and so forth. And now I thought I would just try it out by holding the motor in my hand to see if everything's going to work and what size belt to use and exactly how this motor is going to mount. And it seems to be working just fine. I thought it worked fine because you didn't get flipped upside down. You know, for a little 12 volt motor, this thing has enough torque that I think that was a very real possibility. Yes. <laughs> anyway, the, the one thing that I did find concerning is that it's fairly noisy. Yeah. Now, when I, when I was holding it in my hand, not so much, but if I set it on the floor of the model, the whole model just picked up the vibration. And so I thought, I need to build some kind of an isolating motor mount to keep the vibrations from getting into the building and amplifying the sound of the motor. Right. So I came up with this, well, probably a little over-engineered <laughs> system of uh, mounting the motor on a foam block. And uh, the problem is, it's still really noisy. Oh, no. So I kept thinking, well, maybe when I add the sound system in here, then it won't be such a problem. I can sort of drown it out with the sound of splashing water. Yeah, drown it out, <laughs> right. But, uh, boy, I, so it's just sitting here on the bench, it's really, really loud. And I thought, this is just going to be unacceptable. So anyway, I tried setting it in place in the canyon to see if maybe sitting on the... <laughs> the cement floor it would improve the situation yeah you old lady <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah i think we picked up an echo in the canyon it got even louder and i was like well this is just not gonna work so i came up with an idea let's switch over to the 100 rpm motor that means that there are fewer gears in the gearbox but then i can add a motor speed control and turn the speed of the motor down. And in theory, if the motor's running at a slower speed, uh, it will grind less, so I go to the 100 RPM and then slow it down to 10. Does that make sense? It does, because if you leave it at 100 RPM, it's gonna turn into an air pull. Yeah, and sound like one, too. I imagine. So anyway, got the new motor, got the speed control, and here's the motor. The 100 RPM motor slowed down to 10 RPMs by using the speed controller, and now it's absolutely quiet. Well, there you go. And this gives me a knob to play with. A what? <laughs> well, I can turn the speed up and down, and, and it's just, it's a toy. It's knobby. It's knobby. It's a yeah. knobby toy, and I can see just how fast I can make it go. Oh, I'm a, boy. I'm, I'm a little kid again. Well, I never actually grew up in the first place. So. As <laughs> long as your little wheel doesn't take off. So, success. Yay. Now, let's move on to lights. Of course. That has to be the most fun part. I just, I, it's just so fun. It is. You turn out the lights and, and the, the interior lights come on and it's just, it's magic. We bring good things to life. Anyway, here's a system that you and I and Steve and, and Al have all used. You just take a couple of brass rods and run them through the roof part of the structure and then you can hang all of your lights on it. Wow, knob and tube. 
Yeah, actually, up on the logging railroad, you and I work together on mm. um, putting the lights in the locomotive shop. Right. And use this exact system, only dressed it up to look exactly like knob that's, and tube. Yeah, that's what we did. And hooked up the wires. You Completely did the power <laughs> meter. <laughs> the power meter, of course. <laughs> and ran it out to the pole, and it's all functional. Exactly. Functional knob and tube. Mm -hmm. Just be on the lookout for that functional power bill. It's in 120th scale. It'll be in 120th scale when it arrives, too. It's a very small envelope. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm using this same connector that I always use. But here on the lights, I'm wiring that the way I normally do, with the female side of the connector connected to the building and the male side connected to the power supply. And I've done that the other way around on the motor so that I can easily distinguish between the motor circuit and the light circuit. Oh, that's neat. That's crafty, actually. Yeah, and it wouldn't matter because they're both 12-volt circuits. Mm. It's just which switch you throw to have it come <laughs> on on the switch? control panel. <laughs> which switch is which? But I don't want to turn the light switch on and have the motor come on. No. Now, I thought it would be fun to put one of these lights here from Locomotive Joe. You found Locomotive Joe. Yeah, I did. And he makes these, he hand makes these, these little lights in different scales. And we are using them all around the railroad. But I thought it would be fun to put one of these here on the gable lighting up the sign that says Gardner Brothers Mill. The problem with that is because this is a big urethane casting, the walls are like an inch thick. And that means that the light will mount up into this heavy part here. And I've got to find some way to get the wires out of there. So I just took a drill bit. There's no getting a drill up in here. But I just took a drill bit and went in there and turned it by hand and carved out an area here that I could uh, fish the wires down through big enough that uh, when I come in here with my pin vise and drill into the gable, it'll be real easy to just hit that larger hole and then fish the wires down through there. That works. And now it's just a matter of hooking those two wires up to the two brass rods that run down through the middle of the building. And then you have your light. Now I'm also using uh, to light the interior these uh, 12 volt incandescent lamps from Minitronics. We get these from the train shop, right? which is at Gardner Village, mm -hmm. which is where the Gardner Mill is. <laughs> so there's a, yeah, it's, it's kind of a, it's appropriate. Anyway, I just love these and I just love the nice golden glow that we get off of them. So I thought I'm going to put uh, these throughout the building and I wanted to use that as a porch light on this casting you gave me. Right. And you found this somewhere. I think it's a Chinese knockoff of a Delton. Yeah, I have no idea. I think it was on eBay. It was a fellow selling things like that. Well, it's it's originally a Delton, uh -huh. but it's a, it's a recast right. of a Delton. Yeah, it so works. I love it. I do too. And then I just fished the, the leads from the porch light down under the pier where they don't show and brought those around the back of the building here and connect that up to the main bus. Oh, that's neat. Then I wanted to test one of the Minitronics lights here inside the building and just see how that looks to see if one of these is going to work and well, that's kind of anemic. Ah. Also, I think it's really dark back over here. The mill race comes down through here and there's a walkway out to the mill race. So I think adding a, a light back there and then also adding a light on the second floor here. Absolutely. Now in its finished form, there's going to be a back on the building, but with the back not on there, I love this glow coming out from behind. Mm -hmm. And I just love the way it makes the mill wheel look. So I thought I'm going to add a lantern back here behind the mill wheel uh, to create that same effect. Exactly. So that it still does that once the back is on the building. Mm -hmm. Even with half of the lights illuminated, it still looks really good. Well, and we've got these LED floodlights up on the ceiling that we can change colors with. And that's just fun to see how it looks in the different lights. This is going to look really cool. Well, one thing I like is that little shed. It looks like the door's part way open and there's a light on inside. This is that lantern that I created back behind the mill wheel. 
I may decide to tone that down just slightly, but I love the effect. I do too. And here's the light pole back by the walkway to the mill race. The walkway's not built yet, but the, the light pole is here and that looks really nice. Yes, it does. Now, you know me, I'm just never happy unless I've completely over, over engineered and overthought something. <laughs> And I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have a slight flickering LED going on inside with the other lights? Right. So I added this LED, and uh, as per last week's video on LEDs and stuff, that means you have to add the appropriate resistor to the flickering LED. And here's the math to make all that work. And <laughs> And then, of course, there was just a good deal of trial and error. Mm -hmm. And then I had a flickering LED. Right, and no flames. Well, I hope there's no flames because we have no 20th scale fire insurance. No. <laughs> well, it's working. The lights are on, the motor's turning. It still needs a sound system. <laughs> Do you want me to sing? <laughs> I could whistle. <laughs> well, there it is. A working mill wheel and all of the building structure lights. Mm. Now, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe because you're, you're going to want to be notified as we, as we add to this series. <laughs> And the easy way to become a subscriber is with the upcoming blue button. Zoink! Right there, the blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday. Because we have some Tuesday stuff to do. We'll see you then. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.